Now, here it is something that might come in handy nowadays. Farmers from a 700-year-old village in Tanzania use such unusual soil erosion techniques that could benefit farming today. Research from the University of York here in Britain shows that the irrigation systems and terraces of the site at Engaruka were not built to prevent soil erosion, as originally thought, but to capture eroded sediments to feed the arid landscape. Dr. Carol Lang is the author of the study. Basically, what these farmers were doing was something extremely sophisticated as far as irrigation systems and terraces were concerned. What we normally associate as being bad, which is soil erosion, was actually pretty good for these farmers at the site of Engaruka in Tanzania. So what was in these sediments which were good for their crops? The sediments were extremely fine. So what you would normally get with alluvial sediments is you would generally get a mix of very coarse materials. But what the farmers were doing as far as the sediments were concerned was they were capturing the good, fine sediments that you dig that you didn't have to clear your fields for. So although they were exerting a lot of effort to build these canals, channels and walls, as far as maintaining the fields are concerned and as far as digging the fields and ploughing them, there wasn't quite as much effort had to be put in. And these sediments were getting renewed on a seasonal basis. Okay, so how did you come to this conclusion? What was it that you saw? that made you think, actually, this is different to what you'd normally expect? Well, generally, when you have areas of soil erosion, you'll build terraces to try and stop the erosion occurring. And initially, when this site was discovered by an extremely famous paleoanthropologist and archaeologist, Louis Leakey, back in 1935, he thought of it as what he thought to be a lost city that would sustain about 40,000 inhabitants. But... In the 1960s, Homer Sassoon did some archaeological excavation at the site as well. And he, at that point, realised that although the site was covered in lots and lots of stone lines, these lines, was not a city, but what it was, was an extremely large agricultural site. And these stone lines were delineations of fields. Is there anywhere else in the world that these sort of techniques have been used, or can they be useful today even? Funnily enough, as part of the research project we work on, through speaking to other researchers across the world, we now realise that these features occur not only in East Africa, but we see them in the Middle East, we see them in India. We actually see them in the Atacama Desert in Chile as well. Today, what we see is that this system is still being utilised and it's a perfect example of the system and the sediment capture itself. And this is based in the UNESCO World Heritage Site of Konso in Ethiopia, where the farmers prize these sediment capture fields above the terrace fields that they have on the slopes. What do these techniques tell you about society at the time? I think as far as society is concerned, obviously, they're extremely, extremely clever as far as being able to understand what was happening within the landscape. They saw that the landscape could flood on a seasonal basis, and they actually utilised the way in which the landscape flood. They manipulated these floods and they manipulated the water and the sediments so they could actually grow crops. And by doing that, they accumulated vast quantities of sediment across the landscape. That's uh, Dr. Carol Lang, who is the uh, author of that study. The wisdom in that is just phenomenal. It is incredible. 700 years ago. Yep. Newsday from the BBC in Cayman Island with you. In a moment, more news. Stay with us.